Yeah, hi guys, uh, good evening. So today we are going to discuss about small overview of what is Python full stack. Under Python full stack, what are the modules we are going to learn and what about the career opportunities and what about the projects, everything will give you some overview. So first one, so under Python full stack, we are going to cover Python programming language, our first two module is Python programming language. And the second one, Django framework with the REST API. REST API. And the third one, MySQL database. And after completion of MySQL database, next we are going to start UI or front end technologies. UI or front end technologies. Under front end technologies, first one is HTML and CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, and important one React JS, and the final one is jQuery. So these are the modules we are going to cover. And along with this, few tools we are going to cover under the same course. First one is VS Editor and Sublime, Jupyter Notebook. So these all are different tools we have to work with the Python. And along with this, GitHub, and hit the bash along with postman. So these are the tools and the modules we are going to cover. So while working with the Python and the Django along with the front end technologies, we have to use all these tools. Even in our resume also, programming languages like Python, JavaScript, and the frameworks, Django framework, API development, REST framework, database, SQL, MySQL, printed technologies, tools, version control, because we are going to try as a full stack developer, right? So that's why we, we should know all the concepts. So this is about our modules list. And to work out this, we need four to five months duration. Minimum it will take five months of duration because we have to focus on our projects also. And every day we have one hour session from Monday to Friday and 45 minutes about our regular class and the last 15 minutes about our doubt sessions. For example, today we discussed some control statements concept. So end of this session, we are going to discuss one-to-one -one about your queries. And for example, yesterday we have assigned one task. About the task, if you have queries, we are going to clear. So like this, every day we have to use this 15 minutes doubt session. And after this session, here you will get class recording videos. If we join online or offline also, Daily after the class, you will get your class recorded video. In case for a few concepts, we have to watch multiple times. We have to revise. For this, it is very useful. To access these videos, we have a separate application. LMS application is available. In the laptop, we can access through web application. And we have Android application also available. So in Android app also we can install and iOS app also available. Same like our Amazon Prime and Netflix will give you the access. You have to log in with your mobile number so that inside you will get your videos module wise along with the materials as well. So this is about our class recording videos. And the important one, regular assignments if we are going if you are a fresher or if you are from other background first we need some real-time knowledge so for example one hour session we are attending 
we are not going to practice after this session. In case, if we are going to assign one task next day, you are unable to complete the task. So we need regular practice. If we are practicing, then only we'll get the clarity what type of errors we may face and how to fix the errors. Because in interviews, nobody will ask you about like definitions or advantages. Everybody will focus on real-time scenario. That's why we have to practice our regular assignments and you have to submit the next day only. And about the assignments, if we have any doubts, if we have any queries, in last 15 minutes, we are going to clear. And after the assignments, next one is about projects. For example, without the projects, if you are going to learn the course, there is no use. First, you have to learn. After that, you have to practice. After that, you have to implement in the application process. Then only you will get the clarity because we are learning so many programming language and so many tools. By using these things, how to develop the application, we should know that. That's why around 10 projects we are going to cover. So few projects related to Python, few projects related to Python with the Django and database. So like this, we have multiple combinations we are going to perform along with the projects. And after completion of the projects, we are have separate resume preparation sessions are there based on your previous background. If we are a fresher, if we have career gap, if we are working in another platform like admin sector, non-IT sector, civil or mechanical, based on your requirement, we are going to conduct separate resume preparation sessions. So this is about our basic course details, like what are the modules and the duration and the class regarding videos, assignments, resumes, and projects. Now we'll see what exactly full stack and where we are using all these technologies. So before going to discuss this, so you may hear this word full stack development, full stack development or full stack developer. First of all, what is a full stack development? Full stack development is nothing but developing an application from end to end. So if we are going to develop one application from scratch to end, complete application, this process only full stack development. If you want to become a full stack developer, you have to develop one complete application from scratch to end. So here, every application is divided into two parts. First one is front-end and the second one is back-end. So here, what is a front-end? Front-end is nothing but in general terms, you can say what end user see on the screen. For example, I am a user. I am going to open one application on the screen. For suppose, this is my application. As a user, when we open the application, you can observe on the screen, they are showing some information, right? For example, mobile photo and some title and rating, price and EMI information. This is some kind of presentation, right? This is called front end. For suppose, here I am going to open Zoom application. You can see here they are showing some information. This is front end of Zoom application. And this is the front end of Amazon. Like this, front end is nothing but what end user see on the screen. In the general terms, you can say presentation, presentation in the technical terms, user interface. See? We know what exactly front-end, but when it comes to technical terms, when somebody asks you, what is user interface? So we have to think, but this is the reality. And the second one is 
back end back end is nothing but logics or functionality back end is nothing but logics or functionality so just to observe here this is our amazon application here you can see we have shopping cart option and next here we have account sign in option inside we have online payment option filters options my order section like this multiple features are there in your application if you want to develop different features compulsory we have to develop few logics we have to write some coding part but inside of the application so this is back end in a simple terms you can say front end is client side of the application client side nothing but user side on the screen and the back end is nothing but server side so inside of the application so like this here we have front end and back end for every application if you are using WhatsApp also, we have a front end, back end, Instagram, front end, back end. So here to become a full stack developer, you have to develop both front end and back end of the application. Now we have a clarity. What is a full stack development and what is front end and back end? Then how to develop the front end and what are the technologies we have to use and what about the back end see here to develop the front end we have to use ui or front end technologies so html and css bootstrap javascript and react js and jquery so these are our front-end technologies. By using this, we can develop only front-end of the application. Nothing but 50% of the application is done. But what about the back-end? To develop the logics compulsory, we have to use one programming language. In our course, we are using Python. And to work with the Python, we need one framework so here, Python only introduced one framework to call the Django framework. And along with the framework, we need one database. So you may hear this word database, SQL, Oracle, these all are database only. So what is the use of database? Database nothing but we can store users information in the form of tables format for example i have one database in my database i have one student table my nine o'clock batch all the students data i'm going to store i have one more table 10 o'clock students data like this to store users data we have to use database and here we are using mysql database and the next one REST API. So you can just check the online as a full stack developer in you know, a job skills company, they will mention the requirement. So in the requirement, they will mention API, REST API, RESTful API, REST framework. These type of words compulsory they will mention. Why? Because to work with any type of dynamic application, Nowadays, people are using API concept. So the best example you can see in online when cricket match is going on, few websites they will display ball to ball live score updates. In the back end, nobody are going to update manually. In the back end, they are using API concept. For example, in online, we have one website called CoinDesk. What they will do in their website, every second to second, Bitcoin live price updates they will display. So in the back end, again, they are using API concept. Like this, in our back end, we have to learn how to develop the API. We are going to build our own API. And 
along with the Django framework, we have database and API. So these are about our front-end technologies and back-end technologies. So to become a full-stack developer, to become a Python full-stack developer, we need these front-end technologies at the same way back-end technologies as well. For example, I have joined only front-end technologies. In companies, what type of roles they may offer? Because if we are going to learn a particular course, nothing but, you should know the career also, right? So if you know only front-end skills, here you will get the roles like a UI developer and front-end developer and here React developer and web designer, these type of roles companies may offer if we know only front-end skills. And in case, if we know only back-end skills, so here we'll get web developer and Python developer, back-end developer, so these type of roles companies will offer. See, because we have we, we have only limited skills. That's why opportunities are also limited. So in case if you know both front end and back end, opportunities also increased automatically. Your pay also CTC also completely different when compared to only front end or back end. So that's why nowadays companies are hiring full stack developers instead of hiring separate back-end developer or separate front-end developer. For example, I'm from ABC company. In my project, I have requirement for front-end technologies and back-end also. If I am hiring as a full-stack developer, so in the future, if I have any requirement for front-end, we can shift. If we have requirement for back-end, we can shift. At a time, they are not going to assign the both the things, but you should know how front end works, how back end works. That's why we have huge demand for full stack development. Not only for Python, Java full stack, Merlin full stack, mean full stack, any full stack front end is common only in the back end, programming language, and the framework may vary. So, this is what exactly full stack development and about our career opportunities. Now we'll start our Python full stack overview. So here in our Python full stack, first we have Python programming, Django framework, and MySQL. So these all are backend technologies. So in our Python full stack, programming language, framework, and database are backend technologies. So first, today we'll go with the, some overview about what exactly Python. So here, Python is a general purpose. Python is a general purpose programming language. So before going to discuss general purpose, first we should know what is a programming language you may hear C language, Java programming language. So these all are different type of programming languages. So what is the major use? Why we have to learn this programming? Why? Because in a programming language, we have set of instructions. With the help of these instructions, we are going to instruct your computer how to perform specific task. For example, observe the screen. So here, here is the developer or programmer. And this is my computer. And here, this is my task, some additional operation. So my requirement is, I want to send some instruction to this device to perform additional operation. But as a programmer, we are using our human language and the computer using machine level language. Then how to communicate directly not possible, right? So here we are using 
our programming language because here we have set of instructions or set of rules are there. By using these instructions, we are going to instruct your device how to perform a task. So for this reason, here we are using programming languages. And when it comes to Python, Python is a general purpose programming language. General purpose programming language, nothing but basic to advanced level. Any type of applications we can develop with the help of Python programming. For example, I want to develop one school application. I want to develop one hospital application. Anything possible with the help of Python. And the second, here Python is open source. Open source, nothing but free software. So to use Python, no need to purchase any license. We have a Python official website called python.org. This is Python official website. So from this website, we can download Python and we can install and use. For example, if you are using Windows device, if you are using MacBook, if you are using Linux, any OS or any platform also no issues. We have separate files are available. Directly open this website. Based on your requirement, we can download our Python. For example, see here, this is our Python application. And see, download the latest version for Windows. When we click on download, so download initiated. And if you are using MacBook, click on Mac OS. And here is the file. If you are using Linux, like this, separate files are there. And third one is Python is platform independent. Platform independent is nothing but we can run Python in different platforms. We can run in a Windows platform and a Linux platform and a Mac OS also. See, here only they are giving complete information. So that's why Python is considered as platform independent. And the fourth one is here, why we have to learn Python? Already we have a Java programming and some other programming languages also there. Why? Because to work with Python, if you are coming from any background without any coding knowledge, from the scratch, we can start here. In case, if I am going to focus on Java programming, at least we should know C programming basics. Some program basic programming knowledge is required, but here not required. This is only the first step. From scratch, we are going to cover here. And when compared to other programming languages, Python coding is completely different. For suppose, when you observe C or Java programming, before creating variables, they are going to mention into A equal to 10. For example, float B equal to 2.3. So like this, and this type of curly braces they are using, multiple lines of code we have to write. But when it comes to Python, no need to write this type of code. That's why who wants to change their platform, who wants to start their career in IT, their first preference is about Python programming. And here, if you know Python, in what are the platforms companies are using Python? First one, to develop web applications in backend companies are preferring Python as their programming language. Second one is desktop applications. And third one is mobile applications. And fourth one is enterprise applications. And after that, in testing automation. And next one, 
data science data analytics artificial intelligence machine learning see from development to analytics visualization in different platforms companies are using python so first one web application web applications nothing but with the help of internet whatever applications we are able to open in our browser all are comes under web application so for example here i have opened this python so here without internet is it possible to open this not possible if we have internet from the anywhere from the world we are able to open this right so these all are comes under web applications and the second one is desktop applications for example in my system i have a calculator i am able to open only in my device otherwise i went to shopping they have some building system right so they are able to open only within particular device only so these all are comes under desktop otherwise in my system i have photoshop software this is i am able to open in my device only otherwise some google documents so like this we have multiple desktop applications and as we know mobile apps like instagram some flipkart or amazon all are we are able to open mobile apps and the next one enterprise applications nothing but large scale applications for suppose we went to hospital while booking the appointment they are going to enter your data in their system in their system they have one large scale application when they are going to create one entry for your data like your name phone number disease which doctor you are contacting after consultation your reports are available your prescriptions are available so complete data they are going to handle with the help of one hospital management application so like this in the companies they are using some enterprise applications and the next one testing automation so long back manual testing so like this type of automation testing these type of things are there but nowadays everybody are doing ai tools only everybody are using ai to test the application so in this automation process in the back end they supposed to write few logics to develop the logics we need programming language before everybody used selenium with java but nowadays everybody are converted to selenium with python about automation so why they converted to python why because easy to write the code if any bug occurred if any error occurred easy to fix as well so in case if we are writing some less volume of code maintenance also easy it helps to improve your application performance also so that's why companies are using python in even in testing and the next one data visualization so data science for i suppose i have some 10000 students results data instead of displaying the data in a sheet format if we are going to display bar chart or pie chart or graph format when we open the image immediately user can understand what about the pass percentage what about the so like this we can write so like this in the data analytics in the machine learning everywhere companies are preferring python as the back end programming language so why companies are preferring python this much why because when compared to other programming languages in the python we have simplified syntaxes are there syntax nothing but like a structure or a format so generally in the mathematics we have formulas right when it comes to programming languages we have syntax are there to develop particular logic 
you supposed to use some ABC concept. For example, I want to check given number is even number or odd number. For this, I want to write one condition. For this condition, we have one format. So when compared to other programming languages, in Python, we have simplified and easy syntaxes are there. Because of these syntaxes, here application maintenance is very easy and debugging process also easy. Bug nothing but error. Debugging nothing but process of fixing the error. If we have simple code and if we have like a little bit of code, easily we can debug the code. And it helps to improve your application performance as well. Like this, we have multiple advantages are there. That's why companies are preferring Python as the backend programming language. So remember guys, if you are coming from non-technical background or without programming also, no issues. From the scratch, we are going to start. Nothing but what is a web application? What are the types of applications? And what is the process to develop the application? What is a programming language? How many type of programming languages are there? Like this, from the basics, we are going to cover our full stack course. And here, our Python divided into two parts. First one is core Python. And second one is advanced Python. Core Python and advanced Python. Core Python is nothing but basic Python. Python basics, like the Python installation, how to create Python files, how to write the logics, how to execute the file, how to write the conditions, how to work with the functions, whatever basics are there, all we are going to cover under Core Python. In our Python duration, 30% of the time we are going to spend with the Core Python only. So once a Core Python finished, you will get complete clarity how to work with the Python files, how to develop the logics. But when it comes to reality, to develop some advanced level features, we need advanced level concepts. That's why here we are going to focus on advanced Python. In advanced Python, majorly we are going to focus about whoops concept, object-oriented programming, like object, class, method, inheritance, polymorphism, and uh, abstraction, encapsulation, like this, we have a few OOPS concepts are there. After that, modules, packages, and regular expressions, exception handling, along with the NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, like this, few data science libraries also, we are going to cover under advanced Python. So once the core and advanced finish, Based on both concepts, we are going to work out with the three projects. Because somebody who wants to start their career in testing platform, for them, no need to go with the framework and front-end technologies. Only Python is enough. So that's why only with the Python out of 10, three projects we are going to work out. And after the programming language, we are going to focus on Django framework. So here, generally framework nothing but collection of files in a proper manner. So here, by using programming language to develop any application backend along with the programming language, we need one framework. For example, if we are going to work with Java, Java with Spring Boot. Similarly, Python with Django framework. Django framework also developed by Python. Here, no need to learn any new coding. So here completely Python code we have to use. In Python, just to we know how to develop the logics. But when it comes to develop the application, we don't know where we have to use logics. 
for this here we are using django framework with the help of django framework we can develop web applications very fast especially for web applications django is very very useful and here django introduced in 2005 by python only so why python preferred django why because here this is also open source and very fast so for example in my application i want to provide login logout option otherwise i want to provide some register form so in a django no need to create from the scratch here we have inbuilt features are there directly you can import your particular module you can use for development purpose so that's why we can develop very fast and that's why django also called fully loaded this is one fully loaded framework and next here security also matters nowadays all major applications are facing security issues but when it comes to django no security issues here they will give you the security and scalability also matters scalability nothing but at a time some lakhs of users open your application few applications may display server error the best example is university websites only when they release the student results at a time some lakhs of students are going to open they are going to check their results right sometimes they will display 502 error server error sometimes white empty space they may display because of scalability issues but when it comes to here there is no issues and the last two feature is django is versatile nothing but with the help of a django framework we can develop small scale to large scale any type of applications any category applications also possible here these are the different features of our Django framework. In our Django framework, there is no basics from day one to day end, end of the day. Every day we have to develop different applications with different features. For suppose, in day one, we are going to discuss how to install Django framework. After that, how to develop sample application. After that, how to connect your application with the templates. Templates, nothing but pages, home, about services like this. After that, static files, how to add colors, how to insert images, videos, tables. And the next one, how to work with the models. Models, nothing but related to database. In your database, how to create the table how to add the data, how to delete the data. And next one, forms concept. In the different websites, contact form, quotation form, demo register form, login form, logout form, different type of forms are there. So how to develop these forms? And the next one, template inheritance. Nothing but how to access properties, how to access code from one page to another page. So like this, we have number of advanced level concepts are there. So here, not possible to write all the concepts. So when it comes to Django framework, daily we have to develop different features in your application. By end of the Django, you will get one complete application. And here, when we are working with the Django framework, Along with this, we have to use REST API also. Because nowadays to work with the dynamic applications, we have to use REST API. So API is nothing but application programming interface. By using API, two applications can communicate each other without manual interaction. For suppose, I have some ABC application and I have some another, some XYZ application. I need some data from XYZ application. 
So simply with the help of this concept, we can communicate each other, we'll get the response from other application. In a simple terms, you can say, this is one communication layer between front end and back end or communication medium between two different applications. So when it comes to REST API, we are going to learn how to build your own API, how to connect with the database, how to add new data, and how to read the data, how to update, and how to delete, and how to authenticate the users, and how to set the permissions, and how to connect with your application, how to test your API from the scratch to advanced level, we are going to cover under REST API. So you can see in a backend, we know logic building purpose, we know programming, and to develop the backend framework to get data API. Along with this, we have to use database also. Generally, in our Django framework, Django will provide you one free database called SQL Lite 3. This is inbuilt database. No need to write any SQL queries. But when it comes to real time, in interviews only, especially, your employer may ask you, SQL Lite 3 is an inbuilt database. Do you know any other databases? Do you know how to work with other databases? Because in real time, we don't know client requirement. Different client may ask you different requirements. That's why along with the SQL Lite 3, we are going to discuss MySQL database, one of the easiest database. Here, how to create a database, how to create tables inside of the database, and how to add records, how to delete, how to read and update database connections. So everything we are going to cover under SQL Lite 3. So these four elements are our backend technologies. So if you know programming language, framework, database with the API, you are able to develop any application backend from scratch to end. So 50% of the application is done. But what about the front end? Because your major focus is about front end also. To attract the users, we have to use different styles, different images, different layouts. Then how to develop the front end? For this, we are using front end technologies. So under front end technologies, first one is HTML. If you are coming from B-Tech or computers background, you may hear this word web technologies or HTML. HTML nothing but hypertext markup language. Hypertext markup language. By using this, we can design layout of your application. Layout nothing but like a plan or blueprint. So generally in a real time, if you want to construct one house, first we need a plan. As per plan, we are going to start the work. If we have a single plan, same model houses, we can construct n number of possible. Similarly, to develop any type of application, first we need a layout. So observe here, I want to develop one hospital application. So here is my hospital branding logo. And here is about my menu, like a home, treatments, and hospital photos, and book appointment. And here is the doctor login and patient login. Here we are displaying hospital photos. Right side we are displaying one patient appointment form. And the left side we are writing some content about hospital. See, this is look like a raw data, one plan for your hospital application, right? To design like this, here we are using HTML. But you can see here, is there any look and feel? No, it's like a completely raw data. But to attract the user, we have to use some styles. 
we have to provide some rich look, right? For this reason, here we are using CSS, cascading style shapes. By using this, we can provide rich look for your application. In a simply, we can say, if you want to add styles to your application, we have to use CSS. The best example, observe this is my application. Now I am going to add some color. So you just observe the difference. Before the color look is different, now look changed, right? Like this, with the help of CSS, we can add styles. And the third one is Bootstrap to develop responsive application or otherwise device friendly applications. For example, nowadays everybody are using smartphones, tabs and desktops. Based on the device screen, automatically your application should be minimized. For suppose, currently I am using my Python application in laptop. So full information they are showing. And here I'm checking Amazon. So full information they are showing. Now the same Python application I'm going to open in a mobile device. See, based on the mobile device size, so your content minimized, we are able to see total content here only. But to open Amazon, so to read total data, you have to scroll manually. This is not a responsive or device friendly application. So to develop responsive applications, here we have to use a bootstrap. And after the bootstrap, next one is JavaScript. In a backend Python, the same importance we have to give for JavaScript in our front end. By using JavaScript also, we can develop logics or functionality from the client side. Client side nothing but front end. For suppose, here we have one patient appointment form. First, we are asking enter your name, enter your phone number. But instead of phone number, user entered email ID. What they will display? Please enter valid phone number. Please enter valid name. This type of warnings they will show you, right? This feature is called form validation. I think, but whatever data entered by the user is entered valid format or not. To check this, we have to perform some validations. In the front end, to add functionality for HTML, here we are using JavaScript. Especially in the front end, JavaScript is very, very important. If you know JavaScript, Automatically, you will get direct jobs based on JavaScript and React.js also. Java is different. JavaScript is different. There is no connection. And after the JavaScript, next one is React.js. So React.js, somebody may call framework also. But it's not about exact framework. This is one advanced level library of JavaScript. So first to JavaScript, after that advanced level, React.js. So especially by using React.js, we can avoid loading time. So for example, I'm going to open this application. When I open the URL, loading, 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 slowly one by one product loading. What we will do? We'll close, we'll go for next one only, next website only. But you can observe Instagram. So when you open the Instagram, so many photos and reels, videos are there. But within fraction of seconds, entire data they will show you, right? Because Instagram developed with the help of ReactJS. ReactJS is a Facebook product. Facebook only introduced ReactJS. That's why only based on JavaScript React.js also, we have so many opportunities. So for previously, we don't have React.js under Python full stack. But nowadays, companies are asking React.js for full stack developer. That's why we have added as per industry requirement.
and especially by using React.js, we can develop single page applications. Best example, you can see Uber application. Mobile app is there, web application also there. But operations we can perform through only mobile app only. But to develop these type of single page applications, in the back end, we have to use React.js library. And after the React.js, here we are going to focus on jQuery. jQuery is one small module to add minimal animations in your application. Animations, nothing but sometimes when we open the application, suddenly one image will come. Suddenly some text will come. Up. Yes. After some time, again, some data may change. So to add these type of things, we have to use jQuery. So as, as a full stack developer, we should know this, not a mandatory skill. So these are about our front end and back end technologies. So now finally we have a clarity to become a full stack developer. We need a front end technologies by using this, we can develop front end. We need a back end technologies to pick up to develop backend. In this process, we need a programming language, framework, database, and API development. So this is about frontend and backend technologies. In this process, here we are using few tools also. Tools, because we are writing multiple lines of code. When we are developing any application, we have multiple folders inside subfolders and files are there. So how to manage all these files? Is it possible to open one by one manually? Not possible. With the help of these tools, we are going to edit our code. These tools also called source editors. Source nothing but code. To edit your code, we are using Visual Studio Code Editor, Sublime Text Editor, PyCharm, and to edit your Python code, especially NumPy, Pandas Purpose, Jupyter Notebook, to test your API, Postman, to maintain different versions of your application, GitHub and GitBash. These tools we have to cover here. And finally, application deployment also. Deployment nothing but application launching. So by using all these technologies, we have developed this application. Present application available in my laptop, I'm able to see in my device. If somebody want to see in online, how to? So here we have to launch our application in online. How to upload all these files in server. After that, when user open one URL, our application will be displayed on this screen. So this process is called deployment or launching process. By end, we are going to cover application deployment also. So this is about our course because we are a full stack developer. You should know from scratch to end to develop the application. You should know to test the application, to deploy the application as well. So that's why along with the front end and the back end technologies, we have added these tools also. So this is about our Python full stack course over you. In the next session, we'll go for the regular classes, okay? So guys, if any queries about the fees and about the like uh, timings, everything, you can contact our admin team. They will help you about everything. About the technical queries, we'll discuss now one-to-one.